All right. Uh, uh, I'll preface this before I start that I struggled with the song this week, but I think I like this one. So, and I okay. actually had multiple choices. So let's go. All right. Okay. Right. Hey. Yeah. That's a mashup. Yeah. That Wu Tang? And yes, it is. Not, not good ear. Good ear. But who else is it? Oh, that's. Wait, is that a. Uh... You got this. Come on. Freddie Mercury. That's, that's Freddie right. Mercury. Oh, yeah, shit. That's right. All right. Uh, well, I'll let you listen to some more at the end. But. Uh, okay. Yeah. Great, right? Nice. Yeah, a buddy of mine made that. Yeah. And I, I like it. Um, the only thing was I like, I'm like, have no idea how it ties into our show. <laughs> it makes no sense. Yeah. But it's a cute song. So. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, yeah. It, was, I thought it had to do with the, uh, well, we'll talk about it at the end. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I, at the end of the day, I'm just like, well, that's a nice song. So, yeah. okay. So I guess the theme of the show is, hey, that's a nice song. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, all right, everybody, welcome to Good Science, Bad Science. I am one of your hosts, Jim Bruce. I am Jeremy Paul. And uh, last time we were talking about uh, uh, the deadly uh, job of being a glass maker, uh, but not deadly in the blowing glass, but just like state secrets. We were talking <laughs> about state secrets last time and the science of glass blowing. And, uh, Jeremy, uh, in the initial uh, research phase, was kind of a pain in the butt trying to find the information, right? Yeah, definitely. Like there was, there was no nothing on the line that I could find as far as uh, as far as the 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 I guess the actual fight goes. Because you were you were saying that it was a fight over clear glass, so I was looking up for. I was looking for wars, fought over it. I was looking for it. I was looking for pretty much a bunch of things. And I was like, There's, there was no war over glut. And then I wrote you, uh, I think, uh, what was it? Uh, two, Monday night or something like that? It was Monday, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, dude, I can't find anything. I've watched uh, the history of glass from like eight, eight different people on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> like the, I can tell you every, I can tell you how to make glass right now. I yeah. can tell you, Doing silt and <laughs> like the silt they use, it's fucking ridiculous. But uh, like I, I, so I wrote you and uh, you gave me an article to read. Uh, I, I think it was a Wikipedia article. Indeed. And then I went on and I found some other things. So I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is what he meant. <laughs> was, yes. And now it actually brings up an interesting topic before we get into glass making and. Uh, what this whole thing was about, which is the last on the last episode, I was talking about the fighting over state secrets and glass. And what was actually happening was I was remembering a real thing, but I was misremembering it. Ah. I was misremembering some of the details about what it was I was really talking about because what I was really talking about was how guarded, uh, glass making secrets were by the countries that possess them and boy if there isn't anything that demonstrates bad science then, <laughs> then misremembering a fact and then chasing your tail for a while and and the internet is filled with people having conversations like that every day <laughs> people who Very are, much. yeah people who are convinced that they're representing a true thing. Um, I might have mentioned this once before. There's um, uh, a book called Fingerprints of the Gods. And, um, and it's, it's, a, it's a dense book. But it's also kind of dense. <laughs> it uh, talks about how the pyramids and all the stuff were built by this long lost advanced civilization 
And it's a good read in the sense that the guy's a good writer. The science is garbage. <laughs> if the book had been written as fiction, it might have been a good book. But it's written in a way to say, this is a real theory. And man, is it fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a lot of people's, a lot of people's science fiction is that way. Where they uh they're heavy on the fiction and little on the science. Yes. But <laughs> this thing is this is this book is presented not as fiction. It's in the nonfiction section. Oh really? That's what I'm saying is the guy uh sold and he sold a ton of copies. It's the same guy who wrote Chariots of the Gods, which is all mm. that like, you know, Egyptian spaceship crap. Right. And it's really what it comes down to is modern white idiots can't imagine ancient black people built a pyramid. So they're like, well, it must have been aliens or spaceships or something. <laughs> and that's honest to God, the origin of the theory. The origin is in European disbelief that architecture hand, hand happened anywhere else. Right. And that, my friend, is the topic of our show in a nutshell, bad science rooted in weird preconceptions that people don't even know they have. But also, he does a really good smoke and mirrors job in this book, Jeremy. Okay. He like, he cites all this stuff and the stuff is his evidence. But <laughs> when you sift through every little piece of it, you realize that it's, it's, it's nonsense. It's, he takes a thing like, as an example, there's a area in Egypt where under the water, there's these stones and the stones have these edges. And he's like, is this an underwater uh, pyramid and another pyramid? Well, the real <laughs> answer is no, it isn't. Right. It formed by natural processes. But he makes the argument, and then he makes the argument for another paper-thin piece of evidence. And eventually, he builds this giant edifice. Oh, let's say a pyramid of uh, dipshittery. Right. And, and everything on the top is supported by everything on the bottom, but none of it is real evidence. Right. The foundation is, is sand. Is uh, absolutely sand. yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's sand, no limestone. Um, yeah, and it was <laughs> yeah. And I will tell you the funny part too is I read the book first when I was like fifteen, and at the time I was like, oh, so interesting. And I read it later and I went, oh, did I waste my time? Good <laughs> <laughs> book, and um. And this is very similar to this glass thing. And then I want to get into your thoughts about the glass. Research. We do a little bit of research for our show. But reading Wikipedia does not make you a researcher. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the difference between real science. So real science takes, like here's real science. This guy makes this claim that the ancient world had this super advanced civilization and the fingerprints of it remain. So you write a paper, other right. people review the paper, they review your evidence, and then they go, nice try. <laughs> what you don't do is take your evidence and just publish a best-selling book. I mean, actually, it's a good way to make a living, but yeah. it's a bad way to make a useful contribution. Yeah, you're not helping society by doing that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like my friend always said is whenever there's those ancient alien shows, he's like, your first tell that they're not real is you're watching it on sci-fi, not the news. Yeah. Like my, one of my favorite things that I've done recently, as far as like the ancient civilizations thing, uh, there was there's a YouTube video about uh, showing a man, uh, I, I believe he's in Fiji, or somewhere around there. And it says, the, the video is titled, How to Build an Underground Pool in 30 Days. 
using on a, only a stick. This man actually does it. He builds like a whole, it's like a coliseum type pool with like, like uh, a bed in the middle of it and everything with a stick. That's all he used was a stick. It had stairs and every like large. It, I think it had to be like maybe twenty feet deep. Wow! And they did like a time of last, but he did it over thirty days, and he filled it with water and everything, like from a bucket. He walked water from a nearby pond back to the uh, the place where he was building the pool and poured the water in, and he did this over thirty days. But he, wow! He built this whole thing in thirty days, and I'm. I, I, I started sharing that video to people whenever they start talking about aliens, like built the pyramids. I'm like, yeah, you think that, but this guy by himself built a underground pool in 30 days with a stick. You don't think they could have done that? <laughs> years ago? Come oh, on, people. That's great. And now see, the cool thing too is you actually are applying you're pl applying comedy and the scientific method to disprove these jackasses. Yeah, <laughs> you have to. It's, yeah, it's like the whole Q nonsense, all these QAnon idiots. Uh-huh. Yeah, talk about built on sand. Now, nobody, you know, by the way, let me ask you about Q really quick, QAnon. If you, for those of you who don't know, and uh -huh. God bless you if you manage to not be exposed to this horse shit, is QAnon... <laughs> vast conspiracy um about and trump by the way is the savior right yeah that's the funniest part of it yeah Do you <laughs> think the name q originated because of uh next generation why do they call it q really it, you, you say think it, it did from, no i thought it came from uh um uh the what's the the james bond guy Oh, okay. Well, Q, the information guy. Okay. Yeah, I thought that's where I thought that's where it came from. Okay, so that that's the other place I guess it could come from is um, there's a an alleged a, an alleged uh, testament of the so people who study the New Testament, uh -huh. and they notice the. Um, all the books have certain things in common. You know, the, look, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they yeah. have differences too. Yeah. And there's a theory that goes, the reason they're similar is because they all drew upon a, a similar original source for, the, for when they began writing. And they always call that source Q. So maybe every, I don't know, we should look that up next time is why do people call shit like that Q? Maybe <laughs> everything that's like uh, undiscovered secret information is always called Q. I don't know. But Did you think that they, uh, like, they were claiming that they doxed the guy and found the, found the original dude? Oh, I didn't see that, no. Yeah, like I saw, saw that in passing on, on uh, Twitter that they apparently finally doxed him. It was some uh, apparently Nazi sympathizer. <laughs> so, like they always are. Yeah. Uh, so, so, you know, you, uh, some some white dude with a beard uh, who had some some uh, uh, some child porn uh, charges in the past as well. So, you know, an honorable guy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, let me ask you a question about Nazi sympathizers. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question about Nazi sympathizers, right? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. How come you never hear about Nazi empathizers? <laughs> Terrible. That's <laughs> <laughs> just terrible. The dumb. <laughs> uh, that's awful, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So we went on to Wikipedia, and I just want to say this about the Wikipedia article we read. Um, um, right in the article, it's, for different parts, it says, uh, needs more verification. Yeah. <laughs> so the, what, well, the thing we're talking about is actually pretty accurate as far as just being a history thing about glass. 
Uh huh. But still, whenever you say, like when you're online and you tell somebody you did research, your research better not have been Google. Great. If you're a real researcher, you should have at least had to drive somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usually. Like yeah. If, if, you, if we weren't in these, uh, like, no libraries open type of thing. Or something should have been in your hand at one point. Right. Or a picture of a thing where you're like, okay, this is, you know. So <laughs> uh, why don't you give everybody, uh, I've been talking a lot. Let's uh, have, me, have me shut up for a second. <laughs> give, them, uh, give them the background of what we're really talking about when it comes to glass making. What we're talking about, and I'm assuming as much, uh, what we're talking about is the fact that uh, the people that made glass and the history of the people that made glass, uh, I want to say designer glass, really, uh, in, in Italy. Clear glass, by the way, is one of the keys. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about the things, what we were searching, the things that they went through and the things that uh, they gained and gave up uh, to be glass makers and uh, to live during that time in the 1600s, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so talking about that, like like I told you at the beginning of this, I ended up researching the whole history of glass. <laughs> <laughs> so like so before before I even got up got to all that, I was I was uh, looking into the Assyrians. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was like, what what's where's this fight at? But you meant the fight over i guess for freedom of, of glass making yeah the fight to contain the technology so that other countries yeah. couldn't make it as easy because it was a money-making venture yeah it was there like that that until that place uh was marino yeah. i don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly uh i don't, I, either. I don't <laughs> speak italian but it was an island yeah an island near vienna yeah so i don't um until they got, I guess, it absorbed by Italy, uh, they were they they're pretty much like a, a separate entity. Yeah. As an island, so they uh, they were afforded luck, like glassmakers were afforded luxuries. So I guess we had to, like, well, on my end, I I went through a whole uh, examination of. Would I have been able to do this? <laughs> like, would anybody be able to do this in their professions? Yeah. Uh, all the different professions that would you have given up? Uh, the, well, I don't know if you want to talk about it already, but would you have, would you have given your life for glass making? Right, and I'm not, I'm not sure I would, Jeremy. <laughs> so, you know, like there were there were there were perks to it. Yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, the like those those guys were effectively uh, indentured servants, I guess, until Napoleon. Uh, so, <laughs> like it's it's just a weird it's a weird profession. Yeah. But, so yeah. So to add a little uh, context to what you said, because yeah, the what they had was they had the technology to make clear glass which was like glass that you could, you know, you could use for, to make a telescope. Yeah. And, and at the time, maybe not telescopes, but for sure, like for guys who were in the business of, you know, making books, you know, the hand books and their eyesight would start to go clear glass. They figured out, oh, wow, magnifying glasses, you know, which eventually led to like what I got glasses. Yeah. Um, that technology was a state secret. So these glass makers, as you were to saying, were not allowed off the island without special permission. Right. And they had to come back by a certain time or what would happen to them? They would have an assassin sent after them. Yep. It would like, have Assassin's Creed type shit. Like they sent video game <laughs> oh. <laughs> like fucking villains after you if you left the island too long. Yep, because... They did not want the technology for making glass of this quality 
to fall into other hands, which makes sense. Their whole economy was was glass based, which is kind of funny, but everybody needed it. So it made yeah. sense. They had this thing. We know how to make clear glass, which was quite the breakthrough. Yeah, some people had opium, some people had glass. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, we uh I guess we all have our economies. That's you know? right. Uh, uh so, like some some countries have oil, Murano had glass. Now and, go ahead. Well, uh no, I'll I'll say that for later. I was gonna so I did not know this. Maybe you did know this, but in doing the research, it was, you know, sometimes you think you'll never know who invented the spear because <laughs> I never know who invented the spear because first of all, other primates have kind of invented it too. So it was definitely close to the beginning of us as a species. And then I think of certain things like that. Like I'm like, ah, hey, you probably don't know. You'd never be able to know who first thought, oh, I could use a bowl for my cereal. You don't know who that is, right? <laughs> but that's an invention too. But with glass, we at least know why they got the idea. And that was interesting. It was a byproduct. Little, little glass um, things formed from molten lead and stuff. It was yeah. a byproduct. And I think that's kind of funny that it was just, oh, here's this garbage hey the garbage has value and that's how they figured out glass that's kind of cool yeah i did not know that you had volcanic glass uh you had uh glass made from uh lightning strikes striking the sand on the beach yeah so people had different forms of glass that they they could uh, one thing i felt i i forgot to finish looking up was i, I forgot to finish looking up if the glass that was made from lightning strikes was clearer than the manufactured glass. Oh, that's a good question. I, and I don't know the answer. My gut reaction says it probably, if it was clearer, it would have been in the smallest spot because it would have been uh, spread energy, not particularly controlled. Right. But there might've been a part. Yeah. Cause that's a lot of damn heat. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, that's so, a good that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. Like I I meant to keep looking that up and I I I guess it just hit me now that I didn't that I didn't finish looking yeah. that up. Uh but uh like there's so many different types of natural gla natural glass. I had to catch myself there. Uh, <laughs> so, many, so many types of different natural glass uh before I guess that humans were early humans were using as opposed to uh, the main, like learning how to make their own glass. Yeah. The, the first ones to to discover how to make a, it's not a kiln, is it? Like you call it a kiln? I think it's a kiln, yeah. No, I yeah. think you're right. Uh, the first people to make a kiln uh, and uh, decide to put a tube in there and, and blow the glass, that's, that that took a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of chutzpah, uh, yeah. <laughs> to yeah. say the least. Like I think this is gonna work. Yeah. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a hell of a thing. It's funny. Um, you know, we've talked about the scientific method, and the scientific method itself, you could almost say, evolved the same way that glass did, which is to say that we stumbled into a cursory thing uh that led us to you know innovations and led us to enlightenment and then that eventually gets codified and that eventually gets fine-tuned to where the modern idea of science emerges and glass is similar where you discover hey here's a useful thing how do we take this useful thing and make it way more useful yeah. way more like the egyptians now this is a fact Amongst the Egyptian artifacts we have, there do there are artifacts that have wheels um, for toys, like little kid toys. Mm. But it doesn't seem like they use the wheel a lot, and huh. that's fucking weird. Well, they they would have just put the 
put whatever they needed onto the animals. Yeah, but you would have thought they have the toy with the wheel that they would have went, wow, this wheel thing's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. But they didn't necessarily do that. Like the, before we get into the, the whole, I guess, <laughs> Italy thing, uh, like the Italy portion of it, I just want to say that uh, the fact that they came over to the Americas with glass beads, and this is how they pretty much got them. Uh, <laughs> it's like, because they didn't have glass over here. Yeah. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't manufacture their own glass over here. It was pretty much molten glass that they had here. Uh, that's the most dastardly part of, I think, uh, the history of glass. Yeah. <laughs> that it cost people of uh, their lives. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. It's worth mentioning, too. It, it was also a, um, the beads thing, the beads for land thing. Uh, yeah. It, there, that was also a funny, well, probably not funny, but <laughs> it was also a conflict of worldviews because uh, you probably know this, but if not, for people who don't, it's worth knowing. You know, the story goes that uh, Europeans came over and said, we'll give you these beads in exchange for land. Um, the reason the Native Americans took the deal was because from their worldview, you couldn't own land. Right. And they thought it was ridiculous that they were offering beads because from their point of view, they were being offered something for nothing because yeah. you can't own land. Right. And as a, by the way, as a modern human being, I've thought about this. They're right. You can't, which is funny because I don't care how much land you think you own. You're going to be dust, son. Oh, uh, it, it gets better. This gets into the, uh, my, my uh, thing that I usually tell people is that even when you thought you bought the land, you still don't own the land because at any point in time, the government can come and take it under eminent domain laws and build a, a freeway or a stadium through it. So yep. even, even you bought your house, you don't own your house because once a year, you have to pay property taxes. So you're renting, friend. Yep. You're renting. Yeah. <laughs> the only difference is that sometime, if you're lucky, you can sell the thing that you owned for a little while and get a little uh, cash to do something else with. Uh huh. But it's all a damned illusion anyway, because you are you are the land. You are just dust. The yep. native the native peoples were right. The it just wasn't very helpful to be right. Yeah. No, they were they were absolutely right, but yeah, they uh they didn't have the weapons. Yeah, I guess that's a good lesson, by the way, is that sometimes it's not all that useful to be right. <laughs> you know, that's why people lie when they're right. Like, you know what? Uh, I gotta wait until it's so, <laughs> it's socially okay for me to believe these things uh, for me to come forward. <laughs> so, you know. People were, uh, they were protesting Harvey Milk back in the day, but he was right. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so. Have you seen, by the way, and your pol anybody's politics or anybody's politics, but um, I don't know if anybody's seen this. There's video of Bernie Sanders in like the 1970s talking about the rights of gay people to get married. It's the 1970s. Really? Yes. <laughs> Bernie Sanders has been Bernie Sanders for his entire life. <laughs> I've got to see this. I'll, I'll look at that afterwards. It's, it's interesting. Bernie, first of all, I will say that Bernie Sanders always to me has always, even when he was young, looked like, has always looked like a guy who just ordered a bowl of chicken soup. <laughs> just always looks like a Jew who just got some soup. And he's going to have a little bread and a nosh. That's what he looks like. <laughs> um, was he making the same hand motions? Yes, of course he was. <laughs> <laughs> he's a tremendously good-hearted human being. And, um, you know, and that's, that's why nobody wants him. <laughs> yeah. When you're, when you're on the right side of history, uh, the wrong side is usually going to win. Yeah, you got it. 
You know, one of the great things about Barack Obama, as far as being a, um, a guy who understood the game, is I, I remember when he said, my feelings about gay marriage have evolved. Yeah. And what that really meant was, oh, you idiots are finally ready to do something decent. All right, cool, let's do it. <laughs> That's Pretty much all that really meant because you cannot tell me that Bill Clinton ever gave a fuck what anybody did in their bedroom. No. He just at one point was like, okay, well, I guess I got to think this. Yeah, this is what I have to say to get elected. Yes. Especially in Arkansas. <laughs> this ain't a fight I'm going to fight. Right. Well, you just say what you got to say to get where you got to go. Now, I will say this. If it wasn't for people like Bernie Sanders pushing, people are like, well, he never won the big one. And I'm like, well, kind of. But he won the long fight that he actually cares about, which is actual civil rights. So yeah, that's the fight he wants to win. Well, yeah, we're, we're, mid, we're about a, we're about 20% there. <laughs> You're optimistic. That's optimistic. <laughs> think uh, the progress we've made is the most progress we've made recently is to at least have people go, Oh, Holy fuck. I didn't think it was this bad. That's right. Progress. That's progress. <laughs> Which is something they were saying in the 60s. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we will solve racism when the Gibbons take over if they happen to just all be the same color. That'll be great. Yeah. The Gibbons take over as a, prim as a primate species. It's the Gibbons. I'm pulling for the Gibbons or the Bonobos. <laughs> After we kill ourselves, either Gibbons or Bonobos, I think will be great. Well, my money's on Samoans. Uh, <laughs> Samoans are going to live forever, man. There's going to be always be Samoans. Well, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, nobody who looks like me. That's all. <laughs> all right. So, so tell me the glass thing you wanted to talk about, Vienna. You had a thing you were, you were holding in your pocket. So um, as far as the, the telescope making, Right? Uh, well, not this wasn't Vienna. That was a. Uh, I was going to bring up uh, Hans. I don't know how to pronounce Lipper. Lippers. Lippers. The guy that invented the telescope. Yes. Hans. Hans Lipper. Hold on. Let me. Hold on. Go ahead, look it up. Right. Yeah. No. Go ahead and do some. Wait. <laughs> well, Lippers something. Uh, he. He. Uh, he. He wasn't in in uh, Italy. He did it in the Netherlands, the Netherlands, Netherlands. Yeah. Netherlands. Yeah. So I can see why Italy, like the um, Murano islands, uh, the island of Murano, I mean, not Murano islands, uh, were so guarded in their secret because you have people outside that have mastered it that much that they can make a telescope then that means that uh, your people should have made the telescope first. Right. And you would have mass produced the telescope. And you could have sold this to explorers all over. Yeah. And that's not something that was happening. True. So I can see why uh, they were being uh, assassinated. <laughs> it's like, like, hey, who gave this guy the fucking secret? Right. Hey, and I just thought uh, I just thought of a tan tangent to go on. You ready? Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm going to talk about Vikings for a second. Okay. The Vikings had a ship called a trireme. Now, the trireme in its day was a pretty impressive ship. It was a you know wooden boat, and they yeah. managed and they managed to travel some pretty long distances consider consider considering the limitations of a trireme and at the time that they were you know spreading their seed setting fire <laughs> stuff the trireme was the most advanced ship around yeah what happened though was that was where they stopped they made the trireme and they kept making the trireme and other cultures made other boats 
And eventually the trireme was ridiculous compared to modern shipwear. Uh -huh. Now, the reason they didn't advance, other than the fact that they were too busy raping and pillaging, uh -huh. is because their violence and their way of living meant that they were never actually sharing. They were only either stealing or keeping. They weren't sharing. Yeah. Now, the initial gut reaction to keep that technology secret, to say, hey, we've got the glass making in Vienna, so we're going to guard it. These idiots try to leave this island, we're going to assassinate them. We're going to give them lots of money and they have a nice lives, but they're essentially slaves or not even slaves, but prisoners. Yeah. Well, living, like, like I said, they're indentured servants. Indentured servants. They're living a great life in one sense, but we're going to keep this down. Now, what's interesting is this. That feels right to people because that's essentially a version of capitalism. Hey, we got this technology. We're not going to share it. Uh -huh. But... It's actually, it's particularly in science, sharing the data is the best yeah. thing a scientist can do and decide that they're not the guy who necessarily needs to make the big breakthrough because what's more important is the breakthrough. Right. So the Hydron Collider, for example, it should be in the United States or at the very least, U.S. scientists should have been involved more. They weren't because we've gotten selfish and stupid. Yeah. And so instead, all the great discoveries made with the uh, Hydron Collider, we're not part of that. And um, the Hubble Telescope, all the discoveries, do you know the most important thing they did with the Hubble Telescope, Jeremy? What was that? They made the information open source so that astronomers from around the world could look at the data instead of saying, ah, these three guys can look at it. <laughs> yeah. So truly short term capitalism is fun. Long term Star Trek is right. It's a version of socialism. It's a version of open sourced information. I mean, yes. drug companies that keep their data to themselves because they want to make money from a drug are keeping another scientist with another idea from curing a disease. Yes. Did you did you watch uh this is a little bit off the beaten path, but did you watch the uh the the the, the Neuralink presenta presentation? No, tell me. All right, so uh Musk, Elon Musk, he uh he had the uh they pre presented the Neuralink, I think it was two days ago. Okay. Uh, so they had three pigs, uh, one, one that had it, one that didn't, uh, that hadn't been implanted with it. And then one that had, had an implant and then had the implant taken out. All three pigs were healthy. Now their whole thing, like it, their, their science, scientist base, uh, their, their crew of scientists are from all over the world. So his team that are putting this together, they're, it, they use uh, nodes. They're using nodes. They're going to implant the nodes. Uh, it, like a, it's like a quarter-sized hole into your skull. They cut a, cut a piece out and implant the nodes into the surface of the brain. And then the, the piece that goes on top, they cover it up with your scanning your skull again. Like they're 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 mapping the human brain through this. They were able to do it with with the pigs. The pig that they that they still had to know the 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 implant in. Um, you could hear the the brain function. They they assign notes to the brain function. So as the as the pig was eating, the notes was going up. As the Pig was uh, like sniffing around for food. It would go into a, like a plane thing, so you could tell what the pig is thinking. What they're hoping for is that they can map the brain, and then be able to upload the brain into computers through this. Okay. So 
that's an example of, of I guess, a man and a company sharing the information because uh, to have a multicultural uh, scientist group uh, all working on this leads to a lot more innovation down the line. And they'll probably in the next 30 years be able to, like they said that they could, using using the, the nose that they have night, right now, they said they, they should be able to uh, upload memories. Right. Like you should, yeah, you should be able to upload memories sometime in the next 10 years. See, damn, I'm so glad you brought that up. That's so interesting. And here's the thing, that'll work or that won't work, right? right. Either it will or it won't. Um, I, I don't want to make, uh, having not seen the research, having not, I don't understand it. I'm bastardizing it, but you, no, no, like, yeah, you're, you're doing a pretty good job and we can even bring this back in another episode. Like, but you can, you can go on my Facebook. I, I shared it uh, a couple of days ago. So like it's, it's an hour and uh, 20 hour and 12 or hour, hour and 20 minutes long, but it's a good presentation. But the key that you're drawing here which is so important in understanding how breakthroughs happen how science happens is number one sharing yeah. right and number two any almost any innovation is built upon the pre-existing work that got you here so you know there's very little in science that's truly ground up yeah you know sir isaac newton actually had to invent some mathematics, which is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, Albert Einstein was building upon Newton and so many other people to get to general relativity. He wasn't just the guy who made that up out of nowhere. There, right. was, a, there was a direction science was going and certainly he had an epiphanous moment. Can't take that away, but it didn't happen in a vacuum and what Elon Musk is doing, well, first of all, it's important to say Elon Musk ain't doing it. Right. He's, he's financing it. He's curious. He's helping facilitate it. But it's, it's, the, his team. it's the team and it's the minds that come together. That's, oh, my God, Jeremy, that's so fascinating. Um, my, um, my a friend of mine, uh, he's an engineer. He used to work for NASA. Uh, he, uh, he doesn't enjoy a lot of the Marvel movies. He enjoys some of them, but, <laughs> um, certain movies, you know, there's certain things where you can suspend your disbelief and certain yeah. things where you can't. And he has a funny objection to Iron Man and here's his objection. Okay. Ready? Yeah. He says, I could see the suit existing. I could see that. I could see him doing all this amazing stuff with the suit, he said, but as an engineer, no piece of machinery like that could ever be built by one guy. Because that's <laughs> not how engineering works. Uh-huh. And and it's an interesting point. That's where he that's where the movie loses him. It's strictly from like an engineering point. He goes, look the one guy who does the programming for the machine for the iron man suit is not going to be the same guy who figures out the cooling system is not going to be the same guy who figures out the rockets uh -huh. is not going to be the same guy who figures out how to make it lightweight and fit. yeah he said one guy in a, in a um, cave? No. And now, of course, it's a comic book, but it's a good illustration of, like, how stuff get, really gets done. Yeah. You know, the, nerds, the nerds at NASA got the astronauts to the moon. It wasn't the astronauts. I mean, yes, they were critical dudes as well, but you needed those goddamn nerds. Very true. Where I would counter uh, as a comic book nerd <laughs> is uh, by saying that I don't know if you paid attention to it, but uh, the first thing that Tony Stark invented was the AI. 
True. Yes, absolutely. So if you have the AI, that's like you tell the AI, I want this to be done, blah, blah, blah. Then the AI is figuring it out. It's not him. Now, let me counter that. One engineer is not inventing an AI. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> now, now, this is coming from my friend is an actual engineer. Yeah. Me, I'm a comic. I fucking love the movie because I'm not smart enough to, to have a problem with it. <laughs> oh, I understand all the problems. I've I've been a I've been a comic book nerd for a long time and yeah, I've been a nerd for a long time undercover. So I knew that there was like yeah, fucking there's some things wrong here. <laughs> yeah, but but it does really drill down to a part of science that is underappreciated, which is the building upon what came before. Um, the you know the the way we look at the universe, our place in the solar system doesn't happen without the mistakes. Yeah. We don't get to the right answer without going through the wrong answers. That just, that's how it, how it is. Yeah. Um, oh, here's a little side, side one. Oh, um, uh, what were all the, by the way, I don't think we mentioned this part. What were all the perks, by the way? What, what were the many things you got by being a glass maker? So the perks of being a glass maker were uh, you could become a noble. You were essentially a noble. Uh, uh, like if you're if you had a child and that child married somebody like a like a like a prince or something like or a commoner or something like that, you didn't lose your status. <laughs> like that was the weirdest like. I, of all the things to gain, so a glassmaker is on the same tier as a duchess. <laughs> like there's, like that's that has to be the the weirdest perk ever. So uh, then I'm changing my answer. I would do that. <laughs> that's like that's seriously one of the weirdest perks where you're like you're high society just because of your job. Yeah. Not because of, you know, uh, your family was born into it. That That's essentially how they stopped being blue bloods. <laughs> it's, because yeah. of, it's because of glassmakers and their children marrying into royalty. Now let's, let's ask the question to ourselves and see if we can think of it. Um, who, in what industry, is there an industry that's analogous now where there's a particular realm of expertise that you provide so much value that just strictly from the job you do you're afforded those kind of perks i mean outside of elon musk but i think he's he's just rich but what what is there something analogous in the modern world in my, to become high society the yeah you're essentially looked at i mean celebrities are of course like being yeah. in movies but. celebrities uh athletes like uh top tier athletes um uh, who else would be hey by the way speaking of top tier athletes people need to stop saying like when a, when an athlete protests they need to stop going saying hey if i didn't go to my job i'd be fired well you have a stupid job <laughs> that's yeah. your fault like even it's even bigger than that. Like people uh, have been downplayed. Like you, it's a privilege to play this sport, right? Well, uh, here's the problem: that that's a that's a sport that has 500 spots or less. Uh, 500 spots or less. These people have been training since they were six years old to be in the tip-top condition yeah. to be one of those 500 people, and you work at Walmart. Yeah, and, <laughs> and so, that's. That's on you. Yeah. Um, if that's on you specifically, if you think you could have done that job, right? And you, you failed at it in high school. Yeah, uh, it's not a privilege. You just sucked. Yes. Uh, like you don't even have abs, you tubby bastard. Stop complaining about other people that have worked out more than you have. And it's unique. The reason. <sighs> The reason the guy at Walmart, which by the way is a fine job, if that's your job, yeah, that's your job. I just applied. Uh. <laughs> Good luck. But, um, 
the reason you don't protest is because not because you couldn't is because no one would listen. Right. No one would go, oh, did you hear what the greeter at Walmart had to say about civil rights? <laughs> no one gives a shit. Not uh, at fucking all. That's, that's why you're not protesting. Not because you're not allowed. Right. And by the way, you could just in a group. You just need to be in a group. Mm-hmm. So dumb. So dumb. So dumb. Um. I mean, by the way, we could draw the analogy, too, to basketball and any sport, really. It's like that's also the individual doesn't do it by themselves, just like in science. You know, yeah. it's the trainer and the coach and the whatever and the whatever. So that the view from the outside is that the individual does all the stuff. No, they don't. Uh-huh. There's very few things that work that way. There's very few things where it's just an individual, you know, like opening a coconut can be one guy yeah that's about it all right here, <laughs> here's a tangential one of my favorite bits of, it's a trivia sometimes on a apple tree or a peach tree the fruit will spoil uh-huh. and it will ferment and every now and then on a fruit tree the fermented fruit a bear will find it and the bear uh-huh. will eat the fruit and get really drunk and then if any other animal or person comes near the tree, the bear will murder them because they really like getting drunk. <laughs> and I think that that's how we discovered alcohol. Because we went, oh, that bear looks like it's having a good time. <laughs> like drunk animals is how they like, that toad is drunk. Yeah. <laughs> it's like somebody... Because we looked could, at a, that could be. Yep. Saw them getting wasted off of dirty peaches, and we tried them and went, oh, okay. All right. Making ancient Pruno. Uh. <laughs> there was, by the way, uh, I thought this was cool honey and wine. E- Egyptian honey and wine. They have found Egyptian honey and wine that people could try. I think that's really? cool. Yeah. Honey, by the way, will last forever. Yeah. And uh, I'm not a big fan anyway, but, uh, <laughs> but, and wine can last an awful long time and be drinkable because, of course, it's booze. Yeah. I'm guessing it was shitty wine, but still. <laughs> uh, hey, what, what kind of wine? It probably, probably potato wine. It might have been, yeah. <laughs> it Some was garbage. Some- it was something you had to drink after you saw Moses part the waters. You're like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> Let's see. There was a uh, there was something else. The I guess the the big thing about glass making that I discovered through all this is that the profession has gone downhill so hard. Like they, what I read was that there's they even had this on Wikipedia. I think that there's only twelve hundred glass makers left in the world oh yeah it's not a thing <laughs> I was like, wait so that's that's something that like that's a job that people really should be looking into <laughs> a glass maker because glass still exists we still people break glass all the time why aren't they tr- window panes are still a thing yeah like that i, I don't know that that would be milk glass though right yeah. So uh, people, we 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 have all these things. At some point, they're going to discover that uh, we shouldn't be using plastic anymore. Maybe there's some to- toxic properties that we don't know about. Who knows? Oh, well, there's uh, plenty of reasons already not to use plastic. But yeah. yeah. But uh, and they'll go back to making like pure glass. Yeah. And they'll they'll find a way to make it like like it's naturally made on, on sand and a lightning strike, and right. they'll make it a pure clean glass, and and that needs to happen so that you know we can have clean containers for things, and we need a person or a group of people to start doing this uh, as a profession. Well, listen, if you don't get that Walmart thing, yeah. Uh, 
I'm gonna go out and uh, buy some plutonium. <laughs> Jerry Paul Glassmaker. <laughs> I, I learned all the science I need to know about uh, plutonium from Back to the Future. So <laughs> we got a, a lightning strike plutonium that same one one point two one gigawatts. That that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> Oh, that's a movie, by the way. That is a movie saved in the editing. <laughs> the original Back to the Future, there are scenes, if you, on the DVD extras, there are scenes where you're like, wow, if this scene, there's one scene where uh, Marty uses a word that had it been in the movie, you would not remember it as a family classic. Do you know what the word is? What? Bag. <laughs> yeah. And it was a good cut. And it was a very 80s thing. It was a very 80s thing to be a guy who was not homophobic. Right. But just liberally used the word fag. Just was a thing. That was just kind of the way it was. I, I remember the scene. <laughs> and it's funny to me that that scene ends up cut and then thankfully so so that we can all enjoy this movie <laughs> so funny just and you can hear in the deleted scene everybody on set laughing ah ha ha can you believe what marty mcfly just said uh that's great uh -huh. and, and it's not even a bad guy saying it. It's not like Biff saying it. Right. No, it's Marty, our <laughs> protagonist. The, the hero of the story. Yeah. <laughs> Just slightly, uh, slightly bigoted. Uh, <laughs> Do you remember the show Barney Miller? Oh, of course. Great show. Uh, of everything with Donna. Yeah. It, uh... Oh, wait. What happened? No, it was uh, Barney Miller was Don Knotts, right? No, that was no, it was else. Hal Linden. Yeah, Hal Linden. Hal Linden, yeah. That show um, was very progressive. It had some gay characters on it in the 70s. If you watch it now, <clears throat> it doesn't seem progressive. Well, you know, but it was, it really was. It's just like All in the Family was progressive for its time. Yes. I think all of the family is still progressive because everything is contextualized correctly. Like we understand Archie Bunker is a jackass. Right. We're not meant to think he's the right guy. Right. Yeah. So I think, I think that one's okay because we're not, it's not intended for us to go, Oh yeah. Archie telling it like it is. <laughs> we're supposed to think, Oh, this old white idiot. And he's yeah. got a you know heart of gold or whatever. Like that's if you, if you're from the north, you're like, oh, this old white idiot. If from the south, you're like, yeah, he's telling it like it is. Yeah, you're like, yeah, you're like. That's why they had so many viewers because they're like, you know what? I agree with. Yeah, uh, there were probably there were probably parts of the south that didn't like Archie Bunker because he was too liberal. <laughs> like how dare he let that hippie in his house? Right. <laughs> like, yeah, fuck that guy. Now we mentioned it briefly, so here's what I want to talk about next. I'm gonna we're gonna cast a wide net this time. Uh -huh. Next episode, let's talk about um, uh, the science and research related to the pharmaceutical field. Oh, and you can bring anything you want to the episode, Jeremy. You look at whatever you want, and I'll figure out something I want to talk about and uh, that'll be our cast a wide net and talk about pharmaceuticals. Uh, That's an interesting thing. It's about uh, as, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, as far as glass goes, glass goes, uh, <laughs> people really do need to look into it as, as, a, as a field of study. Absolutely, uh, agreed. Finding out the difference between clear, uh, clear lead glass and milk glass, uh, and researching that uh, was weird. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like just finding anything on it was uh, how it's made. Yeah. Uh, was 
Yeah, they 1674. Hey, and here's a question for you. You ready? Yeah. Is glass a solid? Huh. Yes. And then the answer, of course, that's a trick question. The answer is actually no, not quite. Look it up. We'll talk about it more next time. It's in a weird state. Like the glass in your window is in a weird state. Well, yeah, but huh. for all intents and purposes, for us, it's a solid. But look, look up how it's defined. Because of the fragility, there's there's air pockets in there. There's a thing going on there, yeah. And yeah. then I would like to mention this about glass. Uh, I don't know why I keep forgetting to mention it. One of the reasons it was such a big deal. If you were a guy and your job, like say you were a monk and you were in a monastery and you were um, a copyist. So you were like, you took the Bible and you made new copies of the Bible or whatever other book you might've been making copies of. But a lot of times the Bible, people's eyesight would go bad. And then their usefulness as a human being was more or less over because they couldn't do their job anymore. And it was such a big deal when they realized a little piece of glass allowed them to see the print again. Yeah. I think about that sometimes because, like, I'm pretty blind. As am I. And there was a time when that would mean my reading days were over. Yeah. That just wasn't something I could do anymore, along with any number of other things. And yeah, one, you, uh, so yeah, you were pretty much useless. To be, yeah. yeah, I mean, you could argue I'm useless now, but for different reasons. <laughs> like but, you, uh, you could do physical labor, you couldn't do anything uh, intellectual. Yep. And uh, what a wildly transformative moment that was! That this damn piece of glass, the first guy who was kind of blind, who was holding a piece of glass and happened to look at a piece of print and went, oh my God, I can see this. Yeah. I, that guy probably cried. But first you gotta make magnifying glass. Yeah. That must have been just the mo a moment of just ridiculousness. Like that's, that's why the telescope was such a big invention. Yeah. yeah. Like to be able to see, like he, he used like dual lenses. Yeah. So he was already trying to see things close up and couldn't, or, or far away and couldn't. So he probably, I didn't look into whether or not he was farsighted, uh, but he might as well have been. Right. Uh, so uh, Hans Lippers something. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll have to look it up, his name. So next we'll talk about pharmaceuticals, um, the state of glass, and how to pronounce that fucking guy's name. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, uh, damn. Jeremy, how you been, by the way? Oh, uh, well, you know, I've, I've been alive, man. You know, uh, I, my health insurance got killed uh, at the beginning of the month, like I told you. Yeah. Uh, I, I applied for Covered California, and they denied me. Uh, Medi-Cal also denied me. So... Yeah, I'm I'm looking for jobs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is this is the tough part. Where when I moved out here uh, in February of 2004, it took me until uh, June of 2004 to find a job. So I'm trying to get ahead of all that. Like, hey man, fucking, I'll I'll work anywhere. <laughs> it's like I have no shows uh, that are paying well coming up. Uh, can't really perform anywhere for any amount of money anyway. No, because I'm not I'm not a big enough name, or and I don't have those kind of friends. Uh, so I have to I have to get a get a day job until things open back up nationwide, where people can you know have two three hundred people in a in a single area where I can make some money. Yeah. Uh, but you know, applied at Walmart. And UPS. Let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> like stocking, 42 years old, stocking shelves. UPS yeah. is a good gig if you get it. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, how about you? How's everything going? Uh, good. We, uh, um, well, he's sleeping right now, but we got a new dog. Oh, uh, cool. His name is Walter. 
Um, he's a rescue. Okay. Uh, he's a lot like me. He has terrible teeth. <laughs> uh, he's a very sweet little boy. And um, he, uh, he, has, he has bow legs. Oh. So we, I don't think we, – we suspect no, – we think nobody else was going to take him. Um, but that might just be us blowing up our egos. Um, <laughs> because the truth is he's a real sweet boy. He's what kind of dog? He's a terrier uh, mix. Oh, so that's a normal thing for the legs then. Oh, no, no, no. Not the way they are. Because his legs should be like this. They turn inwards. So it's like, is it like the, uh, like the cartoon dog? Kind of, yes. Yes. The, one, the Warner Brothers guy? Yeah. Yeah, kind of like that. Um, so he can run, but he has to rest a lot. So he'll run uh, a little bit because he's excited, and then he'll have to rest. Um, but he's very excited to have regular food and haircuts and snuggles <laughs> and kisses and water. And he's a good boy. So uh, give it up for Walter, everybody. Walter's part of our house. Now. I'll give it up for Walter. And uh, I think that's good. Let's uh, – I'm going to play a little bit more for you. You ready? Yeah, yeah. Tell me if that's too loud. Is that all right? Turn up just a little bit more. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. I like that. Right? Yeah, and you wouldn't think they would fit together, but fuck, they do. They fit yeah. together good. That's like that's a great mashup. Tell your friend like he he fucking knocked it out the park, man. I'm gonna see if he can do something next episode. Otherwise, I'll just grab a track. But yeah, um, I think this is in the this is definitely in the running. If you're voting, if you want to write in and let us know, I think this one's in the running. Yeah, please tell us, cause I like this one. Check this out, by the way. I, I think, I think I got the uh, fade out on this uh, stupid computer of mine figured out pretty good. You ready? Yeah, yeah. And drop. Nice. Is that right? Smoother. That was that was real smooth. I like that. Less jarring. Yeah, you because you've been like just cutting it off. <laughs> yeah, I, I still there's stuff about this whole system I'm using I haven't figured out, but I think that worked. Are you using Audacity or what are you using? I, I am using Audacity, but I'm also using my wife is a musician, so I've plugged in her little mixing board. Oh, okay, okay. And that, that helps, but I'm I'm a novice, so. Right. right. Uh, for myself, good night. And good night to everybody. We'll talk to you next time.